Yo people, welcome back to another video. Now with Dune Part 2 coming out and the way Paul Atreides' character is being treated across the two films so far, I've seen people on social media start comparing and say that the way Paul Atreides is being fleshed out is the way that we should have seen it happen for Anakin Skywalker in the Star Wars prequels. A lot of prequel haters online spawned out of nowhere and for context there's a lot of these original trilogy fans and then there's a lot of original trilogy purists. The purists think that they're the best fans because they went to the cinema back in 1977 to watch A New Hope and the original trilogy. They believe that Star Wars died with the prequels. They think they know it all. They think they know about Star Wars more than George Lucas, the guy who created it. They, alongside the media, are mostly responsible for George Lucas and Hayden Christensen getting treated like absolute shit and we saw how that turned out for both of them. These people were triggered because they didn't want to see Anakin as a kid. They think that The Phantom Menace is a waste of time. They wanted all three films to focus on Anakin, seeing how he turned into Vader, a deep character study the way we see with poor Atreides. People had this preconceived notion that Vader should just be some mega savage, even as a Jedi, and that it should be right on the nose that this guy is the one who turns into Darth Vader. A lot of these people didn't like the Padme love story, they didn't like that Anakin was emotional, they didn't like that he complained a lot, however all these things make him more human and more relatable. But for me, these people must not understand storytelling because part of the whole shock and tragedy about Anakin's turn to the dark side is the fact that we see him as an innocent little boy, we see that he was a slave, we get a lot of empathy from the character because of the origin story. Even with what I just mentioned, he's doing a lot of these things for his mom, for Padme, for Obi-Wan, for the people he loves. We see the stress, we see the pressure he goes under while he's growing up with the Jedi. We see how from the get-go, they didn't really believe in him, they didn't respect him. Even people like Mace Windu always trying to ruin him. They allowed his mom to die, for example. George builds up Anakin and always gives you a reason to defend him until he force chokes Padme. And even even then, people excuse that because they love Anakin, they love his character, they feel bad for him and they think that he's a victim of everything that's gone on. I think that the juxtaposition is what makes the whole story even better. Vader is Anakin but they're always seen and referred to as if they're two different people but it's really the same one. They're so different that it really adds to the tragedy that the galaxy, the Jedi, all the losses Anakin took, everything is responsible for the creation of one of the deadliest people in the galaxy. Now with Paul Atreides, I don't know how Dune 3 will end, but from the moment we see him, we are learning with him. He's kind of given this rich kid look, someone who hasn't really struggled, he's been groomed for greatness since he was born. This type of person is already hard to get behind, however he has a lot of compassion, a lot of heart, which is something that's not really associated to royalty. And like I said, because his origin is a bit harder to get behind, the fleshing out of his character makes so much more sense and it's needed so that it gives you a reason to start to get behind his character, you learn about his character traits, how he acts, all of these things. Then, after his family gets wiped out, he has to start applying everything he's been taught and they play a lot with the theme of the chosen one. But it's all at a much slower pace. You're really understanding his every move, whether you agree with it or not. He's far more calculated than Anakin. That's why the slow tempo suits him more. He obviously had his family as his support system, but he's lost all of it and now he has to come into his own unexpectedly, a lot more sooner than what they would have planned. Now don't get me wrong, both are great characters and I enjoy their different takes on the whole Chosen One story. They both share a lot of similarities from this aspect and having things like those visions that they see, kind of struggling with what is going to be real, what isn't real. But I think if you put Anakin in this slow tempo, it would be kind of risky. Don't get me wrong, it would definitely be an interesting approach to Anakin, but the prequels would also just be a different tone all round to the originals and it wouldn't connect as well. People would probably find a way to complain about that too, knowing Star Wars fans. I think Star Wars also has so much going on aside from Anakin's story so if they were to just focus on Anakin you lose some of the other characters, the world building, the galaxy, all of the other stuff. If people don't like Anakin, which a lot of people don't, then they got Yoda, they got Palpatine, they got Dooku, they got Obi-Wan, they got Mace Windu, etc. There's so many different options. Vice versa, I think if poor Atreides is given the Star Wars faster paced story, it wouldn't do him any favours. Dune focuses heavily on him. It's a character study of Paul Atreides. If he isn't written well, then this story isn't as interesting because he is the main focus. He is the standout of the story. A key thing to note as well, and it's kind of the reason these things turned out how they did. Dune is 
far more mature than Star Wars. As much as George may have taken some elements from Dune, he found a way to make Star Wars very marketable, very appealing, especially to children. So creating a super complex Anakin with slow pacing and long movies wouldn't appeal to the kids, it wouldn't go with the brand, and also adapting books will automatically bring this mature feel anyways, especially when it's these long type of books like The Lord of the Rings, Dune, etc. However, for argument's sake, I started thinking, what if instead of the story we got for the prequels, we ended up getting Attack of the Clones as the first movie or something similar, something along those lines, and you still have Revenge of the Sith being the third film, so essentially have a film that is in between both of those films. I think if they fleshed out that Anakin darkness, the way they're doing it with Paul, it would definitely suit Anakin's character, but like I mentioned already, Star Wars has just a lot more things happening around Anakin compared to Paul. So if Phantom Menace got taken out, then it wouldn't work because it's a fundamental part of Anakin's story whether people want to admit it or not, and it's a fundamental way of understanding the galaxy in those times. If we didn't get the Phantom Menace, we would have missed out on the entirety of Qui-Gon's character. He is a very important and underrated character. We see how unique he is in terms of being a Jedi. He doesn't comply with the rules that the Jedi have. Seeing that he was the only one that believed in Anakin, his own Padawan Obi-Wan Kenobi didn't care or believe in Anakin, Qui-Gon still stuck to his gut feeling. We would have missed out on Darth Maul completely and the Duel of the Fates, which changed the galaxy forever. We already know if Qui-Gon lived, then Anakin would have never turned to the dark side. But by Maul killing Qui-Gon, that was him killing the only person that believed in Anakin, the only person who convinced the Jedi to train him, Anakin's father figure basically eliminated. We also would have missed out on Anakin's childhood, which like I mentioned earlier was an important way for us to get to know Anakin, how he was found, how he acted, the whole slavery thing, his mom, all of it. We would have missed out on the Jedi, the fact that they didn't trust Anakin from day one, how the Jedi were losing themselves and they were so arrogant, they just thought they were just the best, no one could touch them, then they started getting scared at the end when Qui-Gon died and the rule of two and all of that stuff. We also would have missed out on Palpatine lurking behind the scenes, pulling the strings, all of the political aspect that has to happen in Star Wars for it to make sense to bring up Palpatine at the end. Another important thing is that we would have never got Hayden Christensen as Anakin Skywalker. They would have cast someone else because it was back in 99. We probably wouldn't have even got the Clone Wars animated series but if we did, it would have a complete different approach, it would have been much shorter, and because hypothetically it would be in between the second film, which would already be in between two and three, then we definitely wouldn't have got Ahsoka, because that would just definitely not make sense. Overall, I think I'd keep everything as it is. I like Anakin's prequel story, I like Hayden Christensen's performances as Anakin, I think Timothy Chalamet has done a very good job with poor Atreides, hopefully that third film wraps up the trilogy in a good way and it does everything justice, there's a lot of high praise, a lot of high expectations now with the first two being so good, but yeah, as always let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, do you think Anakin Skywalker was developed properly in the prequels, would you have liked to see him get a different story? Do you think Paul Atreides' character is better fleshed out than Anakin's? And would you have liked to see Anakin's take this approach? Let me know down below, drop a like on the video as well, sub to the channel if you haven't already, as it helps to support the channel massively. Thank you for your time and have a great rest of your day.